Hello, Derek Masiaga here, test prep expert with study.com. Today I'm going to walk you through some example problems involving fractions, operations with fractions, and ratios that you may end up finding on the Praxis Elementary Education Math Test. Let's take a look. Problem 1. Which of the following is the correct term for the part of the fraction that represents the whole group or complete unit? A. Numerator B, denominator, C, total, or D, equivalent. So as we look at the problem, we're looking at the part of the fraction that's representing the whole group or complete unit. And so when looking at a fraction, we know that there's two parts. There's the numerator at the top, and there's the denominator at the bottom. So we can automatically eliminate options C or D. And so now we want to know which one, which one of these parts represents the whole group. And our correct answer here is going to be answer choice B, the denominator. So whenever you're looking at a fraction, let's say we're looking at a fraction of like 3 fourths, okay? The top number, 3, is representing the part that you do have and the part, uh, the Part of the fraction on the bottom, 4, is representing the whole amount. So 3 fourths means you have 3 out of the 4. Question 2. You've prepared 1 cup of sugar for a recipe that calls for a ratio of 1 to 8 of sugar to flour. How much flour do you need? A. 1 eighth cup. B. 1 and 1 fourth cup. C. 4 cups. Or D. 8 cups. All right, so this is a question about ratio, okay? So we have a ratio of 1 to 8 of sugar to flour. And it tells us that we have already prepared one cup of sugar. So just a refresher on ratios, a ratio of 1 to 8 means that whenever you have, you know, one of this, that means you're going to need 8 times as much of that. And so they tell us that this is a ratio of sugar to flour. So one sugar for every eight flour. And so if we have one cup of sugar, that means that we need eight cups of flour to answer our question. Question three. On Saturday, Jessica watched six and one-fourth television shows. On Sunday, she watched four and three-eighths more. How many television episodes did Jessica watch? A, 10 and 1 half, B, 9 and 1 half, C, 11 and 1 half, or D, 10 and 5 eighths. And so what you're being tested on in this question is can you add up fractions? And so we have um, 6 and 1 fourth, and then we watched 4 and 3 eighths more. And so those are the two values that we are going to add. So we had 6 and 1 fourth plus 4 and 3 eighths. Now, the rule for adding fractions is that we need to have a common denominator. And so when looking at the denominators here, we have 4 and we have 8. And so we want to have a common denominator between those two values. And so I know that 4 can go into 8 two times. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the denominator here, or really this whole fraction, by 2. So that's going to allow us to have a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as... And, and when you're multiplying the fraction, you're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by that that amount. So we're going to rewrite this as 6 and 2 eighths plus 4 and 3 eighths. And now that we have a common denominator, we can just add those numerators on the top. So first of all, we have 6 plus 4. Those are our whole numbers, right? So we're still going to add those up. So that gives us 10. But now we have 2 eighths plus 3 eighths. And so 2 plus 3 is going to give us 5 in the numerator, 
and we leave that denominator alone. So the correct answer here is going to be choice D, 10 and 5 eighths. Question four. Susan is making a flag. She buys three and three fourths yards of fabric. She uses nine tenths of this piece of fabric. How many yards of the three and three fourths yards of fabric that she bought did she actually use? A, three and seven eighths, B, three and three eighths, C, two and 17 twentieths, or D, three and a half. All right, so in this problem, Susan's buying three and three fourths yards and she uses nine tenths of it. And so what they're testing your knowledge on here is, can you multiply these two fractions? All right, and so what I'm gonna do with the three and three fourths is I'm gonna convert this into one fraction, okay? Because right now we have a whole number with the fraction and I wanna make this all one fraction so that I can mul easily multiply it with our other fraction of 9 tenths. And so since four is the denominator and that represents the whole of the fraction and if I have three of those, um, what that means is I have 12 fourths, okay? Because three times four is 12. I'm gonna add that to the three that I already have. So three and three fourths converts to 15 fourths. And what we're gonna do with this value is we're gonna multiply it by the nine tenths because she only used nine tenths of it. And so unlike uh, adding fractions where we need a common denominator, when we are multiplying fractions, we do not need a common denominator. Multiplying fractions is actually a little bit easier. We're just gonna multiply the numerators and leave that value in the numerator, and then we're gonna multiply the denominators and we're gonna leave that value in the denominator. And so on your test, you do have the ability to use a calculator. So 15 times nine gives us 135 and four times 10 gives us 40. And so now what we need to do is we need to take this fraction and we need to kind of put it in a whole number just like all the other options that we have, okay? So since, um, since 135 is in the numerator and it's much greater than 40, which is in the denominator, I know 40 is gonna go into 135 multiple times, right? And so just kind of doing some mental math here, um, we have 40, 80, 120, okay? And then it would go to 160. So I'm gonna stop at the 120, that's three times. So 40 goes into 135 three times. And so we had 135 and we kind of got rid of 120. So that leaves us with 15 left over in the numerator. So our, our answer right here is three and 15 fortieths but that doesn't match any of our answer choices and that's because we still need to simplify this value. And so what number goes into 15 and 40? That number is five, okay? And so if we were to simplify this, five goes into 15 three times and five goes into 40 eight times. So our final answer is gonna be choice B, three and three eighths. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for more ways to study, check out our other videos, and then also make your way over to study.com to check out our Praxis test prep courses. As a study.com member, you'll get full access to hundreds of practice problems, like the ones I just walked you through, plus targeted instruction for any topics that you are still struggling with, as well as test strategy to help you maximize your score on test day. Finally, we want to hear from you. Please like and subscribe if today's video was helpful, and then let us know down below in the comments if there are any specific topics that you want us to cover next. Good luck and happy studying.